In this video, we're going to go over the mechanism for the sulfonation of benzene. But let's talk about the reaction first. So here is our benzene molecule. And we are going to react it with sulfuric acid. Now this reaction is reversible, but we need heat to make it work. And so if we mix it with concentrated sulfuric acid, we can get this molecule. And so in this reaction, we're going to replace a hydrogen with an SO3H group. And so this product is called benzene sulfonic acid. The sulfonic acids are strong acids. The pKa is very, very low. Now this reaction as we mentioned before, is reversible. So if we want to, we can go from benzene sulfonic acid back to benzene. And in order to do this, you need to react benzene sulfonic acid with basically water under dilute acidic conditions. And you also need to heat it too. So let me put a, a triangle as well. You have to heat the solution to make that work. And so this will take it back to benzene. So let's put this all together. And let's see how this is going to relate to Le Chatelier's principle of equilibrium. So benzene reacts with sulfuric acid in a reversible reaction to produce benzene, sulfonic acid, and water as a side product. Now anytime you increase the concentration of a reactant, you can drive the reaction forward. So sulfuric acid is a reactant. So if we increase the concentration of sulfuric acid, according to Le Chatelier's principle, we can drive the reaction to the right producing benzene sulfonic acid. So if you want to sulfonate the benzene ring, you need to use concentrated sulfuric acid. You need to increase the concentration of sulfuric acid. And that's going to favor the production of this molecule. Likewise, if you want to favor desulfonation, if you want to produce benzene, then you need to increase the concentration of the product, in this case, water. So if you increase the concentration of water and react it with benzene sulfonic acid, based on Le Chatelier's principle, you will drive the reaction to the left, producing benzene. And so this reaction is basically controlled by concentration. So concentrated sulfuric acid will favor the formation of benzene sulfonic acid, and a dilute concentration of water and acid will favor the formation of benzene. So I want you to understand the equilibrium uh, concepts behind this reaction. So now let's go over the sulfonation mechanism of benzene. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to generate the electrophile. And so to do that, we need to react sulfuric acid with itself. So one of the sulfuric acid molecules will be protonated by the other. So the OH group is going to grab a hydrogen, causing this oxygen-hydrogen bond to break. So we're going to turn the OH group from a bad leaving group to a good leaving group. And so now I'm going to use this oxygen to use one of its lone pairs, form a pi bond, expel in water. And so now I have my electrophile, which looks like this. So this is the protonated form of sulfur trioxide. If you decide to remove the hydrogen, this will give you sulfur trioxide. Now you can react this species with the benzene ring or this one. 
an electrophile with a positive charge is more electrophilic than a neutral electrophile. So I'm going to use this one in the mechanism. Now, you could use the other one too. I mean, you're not wrong if you choose to use SO3 as your electrophile. In fact, I've seen some textbooks that use SO3 as the electrophile when reacting with benzene. And I've seen other textbooks that use the protonated form of SO3. So you could use either form. It really depends on the pH. Now, this is a strong acid. So in order to use it, the solution must be very, very, very acidic. So whatever the pKa of this species is, if the pH of the solution is less than the pKa, then this form will exist in greater concentration than in this form. However, if the pH of the solution is greater than the pKa, then this form will exist in greater concentration. So if you want to be specific, you need to know what the pH of the solution is and what the pKa of this acid is and compare them then you could decide which species is most likely to react with the benzene ring. But for this example, I'm going to use uh, this particular uh, species. So let's start with benzene. And let's react it with the protonated form of SO3. By the way, if you draw the resonance form of this structure, notice that the sulfur atom has a positive formal charge. And so because sulfur is attached to three electronegative oxygen atoms, it's extremely electron deficient. And that's what makes it such a good electrophile in this reaction. So in this reaction, the benzene ring is going to attack the sulfur atom, causing this pi bond to break. And so here is the sulfur atom. It has two double bonds to an oxygen, and now this is simply an OH group. At this point, we no longer have three double bonds, but two. But we do have a positive charge on this carbon. And so the next step is to use a base to remove a proton. Now the base can be water, because when the two sulfuric acid molecules reacted with each other, water was produced. We could use the bisulfate ion as a base, because when the second sulfuric acid molecule lost a proton, it generated this ion. And if the solvent is something else, maybe the solvent can act as a base too, depending on what the solvent is in the solution. So let's use a generic base to remove the proton, causing the carbon-hydrogen bond to break, regenerating the aromatic ring. And so this is one way in which you could write the mechanism for the sulfonation of benzene. So we have benzene sulfonic acid, or you can write it like this. You could simply say SO3H. You can also put the double bonds like this if you want to. Now, let's talk about the desulfonation mechanism of benzene sulfonic acid. In order to remove the SO3H group, we need to use a solution that has a very high concentration of water and a low concentration of sulfuric acid, or some acid in general. So since the concentration of water is high, water is going to act as a weak base. And of course, we need to heat the solution. Now, benzene sulfonic acid is a very strong acid. In fact, the pKa is very low. It's in the negatives, like negative 6.5. So water, as a weak base, will immediately deprotonate the acid. So now we have the conjugate base 
of benzene sulfonic acid, which looks like this. At this point, now that water reacted with H, we have the conjugate acid of water, the hydronium ion, H3O+. Now, in the next step, the double bond is going to act as a nucleophile, reacting with H3O+, which in this case is going to be the electrophile in this reaction. So we're going to add a hydrogen to that carbon with the sulfur atom. And on this carbon at the bottom, we're going to have a positive charge. Now this is where we need heat to remove the sulfur group at this point and to generate SO3. It's important to know that sulfur trioxide has a boiling point of 45 degrees Celsius. So if you heat the solution, it could leave as a gas, thus driving the reaction forward. Because according to Le Chatelier's principle, if you decrease the concentration of the product, the system will shift in such a way to increase the concentration of the product. Thus, it's going to shift to the right, where it can make more product. At this point, let's add heat to this step. So when heated, the oxygen with a negative charge is going to use one of its lone pairs to form a pi bond, causing the carbon-sulfur bond to break. And so those electrons are going to be used to form the pi bond, making the ring aromatic again. And so now the sulfur group is gone, and we have the three double bonds of the benzene ring. So that's how we can get rid of the SO3 group. And so we have SO3 as a side product. But because the solution has been heated, this is going to leave and escape as a gas, thus driving the reaction to the right. And so that is the desulfonation mechanism of benzene.